beyond. 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 Oh, see that we turned? Wow. Oh, that, that was good. beautiful. That was Welcome, we everybody, to Beyond episode 536. My name is Marty Sleeve. I'm joined by Max Scovel. Hello. Hi. And, and Brian Altano. What's up? How are you? You said hi when I introduced I just want, you. I want to get to the part where we talk about video Hello. games. Okay, we're going to talk about video yeah. games okay. very Let's soon. Let's talk all about right. video games. Uh, we have a special a, episode a, this week. damn about all that crap. Uh, we are focusing on cool. two major releases damn this week. A Way Out. The two of you played quite a bit of Way Out, dressed up as prisoners, as well as Far Cry 5. Brian, you and I played a ton of Far Cry. And then afterwards, we're going to toss to a very special interview with Corey Barlog the creative director of uh, God of War, who was yep. kind enough to join uh, me, Andrew, and Alana, and uh, talk about the game. We were very hungover during that interview as well. Oh, I'm really? not hungover now. So. Great job, everybody. Yeah. So th- the first half of the show, we will not be hungover, then we will be hungover. Weird. You know who weren't hungover? The prisoners in A Way Out. We don't know. They might get hungover at some point in that game. They're very hungry boys. Yeah, Max and I played through the first two hours of that game on an IGN live stream. Um, I know about as much as the average person knew going in. I tried to sort of stay away from coverage because um, I knew it was like three, four, five hours, right? Sure. And, and it's the, the kind of thing where I wanted to be surprised. So this by. is by Joseph Fares, who yes. did Brothers yep. a couple of years ago. An incredible one-person co-op game. Uh, but then they debuted this game. It's supposed to be super cinematic. He had his... Very entertaining outburst at mm-hmm. the, the Game Awards. Um, but then, yeah, you guys got to jump in and play two hours of it. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I think our takeaway was that it feels a lot like a Telltale or David Cage game. Like, it's got that sort of modern adventure game kind of feeling to it. Um, it works way better than I was expecting. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting it to be just just to have either either it was uh, more kind of sleight of hand, more sort of like just trickery in, in the trailers, you know, like kind of, the, when, you know, when, when things are sort of slimmed down. Yeah. Uh, but... You are actually off doing different things the whole time as as sort of separate characters. Um, really and there's cool. obviously cooperative stuff, but like it it it's kind of surprising how you are seriously playing like two games at the same time, basically. Yeah, it's actually really smart because it does a lot of things that I think a lot of video games that have sort of um, you know uh, escort missions or buddy missions or stuff like that. Um, can't really pull off. Like if you think about something like The Last of Us, a lot of that game is like two characters pushing a crate or pushing a ladder or the Uncharted, right? It's like two people get behind one door sure. at the same yeah. time. This has a lot of really interesting puzzles and scenarios which do things that you pretty much need two people to do. Uh, like passing a wrench through a vent, mm-hmm. which is the kind of thing that like would be just be a button prompt in another game. But here, uh, the two characters are sort of a, trying to escape through, uh, let's say for example in a scenario, there's a wood shop and you have to sneak a tool out. And the only way to do that is to to have one character distract a guard while the other character sort of kicks in the vent, distracts another character, and then grabs the the wrench. Mm-hmm. And then they both meet at the exact right moment. And through all of that becomes uh, it comes this really interesting tension that comes with not wanting to get spotted um, and also uh, sort of making sure that your timing is aligned perfectly. And I think that like that's such a simple game mechanic and yeah it's just like in the in the same way we talk about like VR games are pretty boring but mm-hmm. doing simple things in them are actually really fun you know uh, doing a simple thing in this game with two players and timing it per- perfectly it's really fun and really thrilling and I think if you play the, with the right person and Max and I you know we were like really goofy playing on sure. stream you can go check the video uh, we just really got into it and it was just really really fun yeah I think it, it the VR thing is a very good comparison there because it really is uh, to call it to call stuff you're doing puzzles is, is sort of a, a little bit generous because mm-hmm. it's not really a puzzle you're just you're you're cooperating with somebody to do a very basic action uh, and there's stuff where you kind of have to th- think a few steps ahead and, and figure out you know what you're going to do because obviously you're in jail yeah. um there are i mean there, what's really funny is there's there's sort of scenes where you uh i guess it's combat kind of it's like stealth takedowns uh and you have to do the three two one go you know like you yeah. have to actually plan it out which is cool because that's like feels like a real co-op which yes. a lot of games yes. don't have yeah i mean there's a there's a very heavy sense of communication between the the two players um and it's happening you know for we we played it specifically like couch co-op uh which is interesting because um the game is sort of telling two stories at the exact same time and those stories kind of clash with each other not uh sort of narratively but actually like physically and audibly where you're you're watching your screen and the other character is watching his screen and two characters are talking to those two characters and you have like four streams of dialogue coming in and it gets a little cluttery at times um but other than that i think like the the sort of technical scope of it is really smart, um, and it's a pretty it's a pretty game, despite yeah. the fact that it's not the most realistic looking game. They went with a slightly cartoony angle a little bit, yeah, almost sort of like looks, noir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the environment yeah. looks realistic, whereas the characters definitely look a little bit. Uh, yeah, I yeah, really yeah. I appreciate it. it. Feels like the whole the whole game feels like they scoped it very well, and yeah. they they bit off exactly the right amount to chew. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here we didn't quite get to it, but uh, Ryan McCaffrey, who reviewed it for us, was telling me that there's a lot of just sort of mini games and things that. 
absolutely don't need to be there, but they are, and it's mm-hmm. kind of great. Apparently, there's an entire like basketball scene, and there's like Connect Four yeah, and stuff. It, you can have like you can splash water in each other, like a couple of weird men. We also we were playing like we were playing like stupid friends would, yeah. right? And like in this beginning of the game, no spoilers. One of the characters is in prison already, and the other just arrives. And when you get to prison, they strip you in the nude, and they. Uh, Hose your ass down real hard <laughs> for a long time. It is a, it is if however long you think it takes to hose a man's ass down yeah. when he gets to prison, it's, it's this longer. is four minutes longer yeah. than that. Whatever you're like, that's the longest you could ever hose down know, an I ass mean, in a video. Like game. a really dirty ass. I don't yeah. know what's yeah. going on there. And so I'm walking around wet and with a bare ass, and Max found a vantage point from like the third story <laughs> of where all the cell blocks are. And he started like he moved his camera so he could look down at me and look at my ass. Being kind of a creepy. So he's keeper, just like, yeah. hey, hey, how are you? And I looked up and I was like, hey, you see my ass? Yeah. Look at this. And I'm like shaking and I'm moving around and stuff like that. So that's how I think like the amount of, of like sort of like role play you get into it, the how, how much fun you have with these characters. Uh, Max and I very early Early on, realized that just like a David Cage game, the voice actors are definitely not oh, American. So oh good. yeah, but, this is sort of like a whole like yeah. cast of Tommy Wiseau's. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, don't, I mean I don't know why we've never played D and D together because this is the kind of stuff we'd be doing. Um, very early on, we realized like one of the characters he's got sort of like a Southern American accent, but uh, he you, he breaks it every time you hear him say stuff like please. He goes like he's, because he's Swedish. Because he's Swedish, <laughs> so he'll be like he'll be like. Look, man, I don't want any trouble, please. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Whoa, Hold let's, on. let's focus so on, please. That slowly just became Ren Hoek in our yeah. brains. So I don't know about you, but I could really go for a hamburger right now out here in the woods. <laughs> any day now, the commissary is going to bring my fan mail. <laughs> so we just kept doing Ren and Simpy voices the whole time. <laughs> so we basically we role played a way out as Ren and Simpy, and it was just so damn yeah. fun. We played through the first two hours. I can't wait to play the rest of it. I hope we can do that at some point. Maybe. Yeah, we, we should figure that out. Yeah, we'll just find yeah. a few hours to, to, to finish set up this week um, um, what, I've, what i've heard is that it gets it gets even better it gets even more complicated apparently it's uh just sort of tonally a little bit inconsistent and mm-hmm. i think it gets very heavy-handed and serious but it's still got its goofy moments mm-hmm. you know and yeah. if you're playing with a friend it's going to be silly i noticed that with the audio tracks the music um is a lot of very sort of like harrowing simple meaningful piano and then there's Max and I just being yeah. idiots running yeah. around. I mean, um, we even saw stuff at E3 with like you, like you, Brian. You'd be having a conversation with an NPC and like trying to like talk him out of something. And then Max can like like a dumb extra like yeah. walk in the background, like turn around confused. It's really and funny. Yeah. yeah, and like I found like like actual genuine tension in a lot of the scenes where like Max had to distract the guard in one direction and I had to sneak by in the other. Like there's one scene particularly where you're just handing a tool back and forth, like you're next to each other's cells, which is straight up escape from. Alcatraz. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. exactly what they did. I mean, you actually, w- without getting too much of that, there's a lot of references to like prison break stuff, yeah. which I'm a huge which fan of. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so a guard keeps walking up and down the hall, and you have to like, one of you guys is working on digging out, and the other is sort of keeping an eye out. And when the guard comes by, you have to be like, hey, uh, hey, guard, uh, I have a few questions for you. Um, I was wondering, uh, when when is a good time to order fish at a <laughs> restaurant? And he's like, what? Shut up, dude. <laughs> and he's like, well, anyway, just wasting your time. Thank you. Yeah. And he keeps walking. You're like, all right, hide the tool. Hide the tool and you move it back so you keep doing this back and forth and it's just so much fun mm-hmm. so i can't wait to see more stuff like that yeah. unfold with this game there are also uh they're branching narratives um there's yeah. a part where you you come to a bridge and they're like do we take a car or do we creep along the side of the bottom of the bridge you know basically do loud or stealthy or whatever um, i don't you know. have to like com- you have to make the choice together uh, I or, think so. Yeah, yeah. you do. We Which basically yeah. and we you talk about it. Um, there are there are fa- you know failure points. Obviously, yeah. uh, the checkpointing we ran into was very forgiving, which was yeah. nice because I could see this kind of game. I mean, because it is basically the the core mechanic is you and your friend can't do anything right yeah. together. <laughs> totally. Um, so to have there's a part where you have to go like back to back and like and like creep up the side of a wall, which was basically um. Kind of like a timed quick time event. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and our hands be, were like sweating by the end of it. Yeah. We're like screaming, like, oh my God, it's yeah. nerve wracking. Uh, but we screwed it up a bunch. But of we times, died a so. bunch, but it was, it wasn't too bad. Like it yeah. was, it's checkpointed decently. So, yeah. yeah. And again, uh, this is, I don't know, it's cool that this is one of those EA original games like Faye and like Unraveled that like everyone's like, oh, EA is the, the worst company on earth, which it yeah. really isn't. But it's cool when they do things like this where they like help fund smaller games that might not get funded by anyone else and like allow an ambitious, creative, weird project like this mandatory co op. You buy one copy. You get a second copy, so yeah. that you know you have a co-op buddy. Like, so I was really reading cool. how that works. For I believe with the digital version is you can you can download it and then you can invite a friend. So like Max, I can invite you on PSN to play with me, and it'll prompt you to download the entire right. game. Yeah. Oh wow! And then we can connect like that. So yeah, that's the thing. You have to play this game with mm-hmm. somebody else. I mean, 
if you're one of those crazy YouTubers that's like beaten Guitar Hero or Dark Souls with a Guitar, with a guitar Hero yeah. controller, then You'll maybe this, there's yeah. probably a way to do it. Let's play with two controllers at, at once, like yeah. an insane person. I, I can't wait to see those streams. Yeah. But uh, for everybody else, you have to play this with somebody else, yeah. and it's it's totally worth doing. Um, and it like I think I saw some some sort of kick some pushback on that, and I'm like, yeah, but that's that's the experience, you yeah. know, like that's like you can go I don't know shoot hoops in your backyard or you can play one on one with somebody. Yeah, exactly. It changes that dynamic entirely. Yeah. I assume I've never played basketball. I can tell. Yeah, we we do. <laughs> but you got you got through that metaphor. Pretty Almost well. did. Once you get the the big orange net into the points. No, the, the ball's the orange one. The square. net's just the net. There's no squares. And, and then your no dad squares. your dad shows up. Is everyone's happy? No, you all get snacks. That's you, how you, basketball. You win, you win the shoes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of games where you sort of create your own fun and are fun to have the dumbest stories, uh, the biggest game this week and maybe of the year so far is Far yep. Cry 5. Yes. Uh, our review in progress is up right now. Damon Hatfield's reviewing it. He currently uh, is landing on an 8.9. He's mm -hmm. waiting for a Far Cry arcade and some online stuff. Uh, Brian, you and I got to play. You got to play more than me. I got to play about a dozen hours yesterday. I'm probably Max, about I know 20, 25 hours. One of the biggest Far Cry fans. Yeah, in the so office. why didn't I get a code? Hmm? Uh, I just complained that I didn't have a code on Twitter, and then I was sent one. Brian always scolds me when I complain too much. No, I don't. Oh, okay. I think I think it's I, I, when you complain to me. Oh, when oh, okay. you complain to other well, you complain people. To Twitter, well, talk about talk about Far Cry. Tell it's us about great. Far Cry. Uh, yeah. yeah, great. I mean, uh, no, what do you think? So okay, uh, let's let's start with um, the big, you know, uh, Republican elephant in the room. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> um, yeah. the political themes in this game are not anywhere near as overbearing as we, I, I guess, all kind of thought. That they would be thought slash hoped slash feared yeah. depending yeah. on who. Yeah, you yeah, are. yeah, exactly. Um, I I particularly came. I I'm one of those people that wants video games to mature and evolve mm -hmm. and be taken seriously in other forms of media like TV and movies and stuff like that. Um, and talking to Dan Hay multiple times, who's like one of the 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 head people on this game. Yeah. I really felt that he felt the same way. Um, and that so much of that would ring true in this game. And playing through the intro of this game, I was like, oh my god, strap yourself in. This is going to be unlike any the, video game you've ever the played. The intro before. is incredible. You're seeing a little bit now if you're watching uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com mm -hmm. slash IGN Beyond. Um, but yeah, it is this amazing, very scripted opening of you as a uh, junior deputy sheriff or whatever, yeah. like ri riding into Hope County to be like, hey, we need to arrest this dude because he's formed his own cult. Yeah. And yeah. like it is like legit horrifying. It is and I was horrifying. like, oh my god, is this what Far Cry Five is? Because this is such a different tone. There, the game. there is a suicide that happens in that intro scene that is just straight up haunting. Yeah, like it's just and it's shot. It's like my mouth was just dropped open. I was like, oh yeah. my god, this is Far Cry now. Hmm. Um, but then it's sort of a lot more just Far Cry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's okay, because I love Far Cry. Mm -hmm. But I went into this kind of expecting a little bit more in terms of those themes. The sooner my brain was able to sort of shut that kind of stuff down, the more I just enjoyed the game. Because yeah. I think at yeah. the end of the day, and this is another thing Dan Hay said, was that like some people don't give a crap about any of that stuff. In fact, they actively don't want it. They just want to play a fun video game, and this is that. Yeah. This is absolutely that. Uh, that said, I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of sort of like nods, jabs, political themes here and there when you dig around, but they're in the, um, you know, non-essential dialogue happening in the back yeah. of a car, or the notes you find in a piece of or paper. Or a side or mission about finding, like a piss day. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's little side mission things and stuff like that, but in terms of like the video game that documents the rise of the alt-right and, you know, religious cults and zealotry in America and 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 and, 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 and you know re the, all of that stuff that's happening right now in in, in real life. This is not really that. Mm. Um, that said, there's a lot of it in there, and if if you want to kind of role play as being the guy who's coming in to do to save this to stop all that from happening, go for it. Yeah. That said, I th I think like uh, tonally and narratively, you are sort of at odds with like first of all, if you not to get too political, but if you're watching everything that's happening right now in the real world. Um, there's, especially in America, there's a massive battle against the NRA uh, and, you know, sort of people trying to figure out a way to sort of adjust the Second Amendment so that uh, there is a sort of smarter gun control, mm -hmm. right? In this game, if you want to pretend that that is your role, great. But you can't do it without firing machine guns, guns all constantly. The time. Yeah. And all of your best friends love guns. Yeah. Everyone you know in this game opens a gun store. And again, that's totally fine. Yeah. And I love all that. It's a video game at the yeah. end of the day, right? But this has to, it's it's sort of, it, it loses its message in some way. Yeah. Um, but 
I think that the 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 world itself, the 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 progression, like if we want to get into the actual gameplay yeah. of all of, of everything of everything here, um, it's sort of like a best of Far Cry. It makes yeah. a lot of um, a, a new adjustments. It it loses some things along the way. I think that the um, and we we worried about this since the day we found out about this game, but uh, the 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 kind of like you know crazy tourism that comes with visiting a, a, a place we've never been to. I think if you grew up in the Himalayas, then Montana is goddamn amazing. You know, it's, it's a whole new world for you. But for me, um, you know, Montana feels a lot like parts of, of Southern California or Northern California. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that you lose a lot of the, like I never really felt in fear of the wildlife in this game. There are bears, there's bobcats. There's nothing in Montana in the water that can kill you. There's no alligators. Yeah, so you it feels can, less exotic. I yeah, that's that. exactly, that's a good yeah. way of putting it. So you can, you can swim across a stream or a lake, nothing will bite you. You know, there's like large bass, they flip mm -hmm. around and stuff like there's that. There's no like evil bass or anything? No, not really. Yeah, I mean, we were wondering, there might yeah. be like, well, there are some like, there's like hyped up wolves, like wolves who've been injected with a thing called bliss. Okay. Yeah. And so they're like yeah. crazy wolves. I think the thing I like most about the open world design and the progression is you, right after you, you do that opening cutscene, you get off a main, like a small little island, and then the game is like, all right, you have three objectives. It's uh, to take uh, these three members of the family down so that you can get to the father. Yeah. Uh, we recommend doing the one in the south, but you don't have to. Do whatever you want. So literally from the get-go, you could do whatever you want, wherever you want, That's... and the game doesn't it doesn't lock off progression in terms of skills. Like, Nothing. There's really no skill tree. Yeah. You just do things and you earn perks. So you mm -hmm. earn points. And then you spend those points on whatever you want. Like you don't have to progress through the stealth tree. You could just be like, I want this crazy stealth thing and I want to save up for it. Yeah, I, at one point I had like five or six concurrent story missions that I could pick away at a little bit each time. So I could be taking down one of the bosses, uh, but at the same time I could see like a, a van full of weed drive by and yeah. blow it up and then get another little thing pop up. So uh, that sort of like ticking boxes thing folds right into the progression system, which they've added now is less about sort of like hunting for pelts and finding sticks and twigs and crafting on the fly and more about um, basically shooting 10 people with a machine gun gets you a perk point. And it opens up the perk menu, which lets you do things like wingsuit into any place you want to airdrop or carry more uh, remote mines. I really wonder if that airdrop wingsuit thing was added in a post uh, PUBG Fortnite world. Uh, yeah, possible. I like mean, you get So you can unlock a parachute shoot and then for a little bit more you can unlock a wingsuit and then for a little bit more you can whenever you fast travel you instead of just spawning on the ground in the town you spawn like a mile above the town right. in your wingsuit and so you ostensibly every time you fast huh. travel you just airdrop into the world yeah um, I think it's a gta 5 cheat actually that's honestly well, far, yeah, you in yeah. the sky like, yeah you know, far cry has right? done wingsuit ish so before, things yeah, before. before yeah um and i think like the, the to just to, to like to really cement this, this is not a Assassin's Creed Origins, Breath of the Wild style sort of rehaul of this totally. entire franchise. Yeah. Um, and I think like maybe I was foolish for thinking that, and also it didn't need it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I feel like by the time Zelda got to where it got to, that it needed to be overhauled. And Assassin's Creed, you know, we were just like we're getting one every single yeah. year. It was like stop, take take a breath. Um, Far Cry, we get like one every year and a half, every two years. Uh, and I was saying to you, Marty, that it feels it feels. Far Cry games kind of feel like a, like destination weddings at this point, where it's like they're they're exotic and they're fun and they're cool and you get drunk and you do insane things, but they're also still weddings. You know, like there's the thing, the seven things that always happen at every single one yeah. of them. Um, but then there's all this all this other cool stuff that you get to see mm -hmm. and do. Um, there's a there's a level of jank, and that's not a real word. <laughs> that is a that is sort of like a non technical way of describing just like a ragdoll idiocy that happens in video in games. Far Cry games and Bethesda happens, games. Yes, and, yeah. Yeah. and it happens here in a way that will ha that had me howling laughing at my TV multiple times, where it's just the, there's ten different systems at once and the chaos ensues. And you're in the middle of like liberating an outpost and you're quiet. You don't make a single noise, you don't break a single branch, and all of a sudden a bear runs out of nowhere yeah. and he knocks everything over and then four men are on fire and then a helicopter shows up and you go guns out and you're screaming and you're laughing yeah. and you win yeah and liberating yes. an outpost in a far cry game is unlike the like you you do that in so many video games but in far cry there is nothing like that it feels so good when the game like slow motions and all of a sudden those stars come up saying yeah. that you won and then you see like a little cutscene of like normal people coming back and like boarding up the windows and being like all right we're gonna turn this into an actual little city yeah and so there's a new system now there's like a buddy system right where you can bring in friends that which is really cool you don't like npcs aren't just helpless idiots that you pick up yeah. off the ground you can pick them up and be like hey Help me out. 
he'll be like, oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'll get in your car. I'll yeah. shoot guys. Yeah, and there's like nine bespoke characters, which like you've seen Boomer before. There's Herc from some of the other games. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are snipers. There's an actual bear named Cheeseburger. I don't have him yet, but I want to get yeah. the bear named oh, Cheeseburger. Oh, well, that just, you just got me very interested. Yeah, in but it's great because then you can get a perk to where you have two of them. And so like I'm in a mission where I have my quiet like sniper from, from Metal Gear who's up in a uh, water tower picking guys off. And then I also have a guy in a plane named Nick Rye who I can just send on strafing runs yeah so like i can take out an entire outpost by just directing the two of them you can run around the entire game with a dog and a bear killing people yeah. with you like it's huh. that's pretty damn nuts yeah. um but you know at the end of the day it really is a lot more, it's it's far cry and if you played uh four and primal specifically a ton like i did i you know played those things like pretty much 100 percent of them then this this is more of that and you'll love it and there'll be times where like it was annoying. Um, you were playing on Xbox One, and you said the loading times were great. One, yeah, one so X. I was on a, I was on a One X. Uh, that was just the code I got, and uh, yeah, the loading times were great. Like probably f- ten to fifteen seconds after a death. Because they were upwards of forty five to fifty seconds on a PS4 on a Pro, Pro okay. which is like that's a bummer. So like, yeah, that's, we'll I see. Mean, we'll see if that's a day one patch thing. Yeah. Maybe that's like Bloodborne to where that's only only. <coughs> Yeah, you're doing good. No, so anyway, the entire game uh, is gorgeous, and the cool thing about the loading times is they happen when you die or when cutscenes happen. But when uh, when you're out in the world, the whole game is just it's there. It's giant just, and seamless. Yeah. It just it just loads. You get into a helicopter, you fly up, you wingsuit down onto something. My favorite thing to do in that game is fly, find a compound, fly over it with a helicopter, aim the trajectory of the helicopter so it's going to hit the compound, parachute out, land 50 feet from the front door. Helicopter lands on the roof, explodes. 100 men in there are like, what the f-? And then I run and I start shooting yeah. all in the back yeah. of the head. It's a nice it's way so to start a compound off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I might have to get into this. Yeah, so what is this like, as a huge Far Cry fan, like, does this sound like, you know, both its handling of some of the political stuff that so we that's may a, have put that, on it? So that sounds totally like a Far Cry. I mean, remember, like, the, the way we were kind of sold on, on Voss in Far Cry 3, and he was like, oh, it's the definition of insanity. Oh, my yeah. God, it's going to be so crazy. It's going to be so insane. And then you get in there, and you're like, this is a, 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 the broiest main character yeah, you could possibly yeah. play as. Your upgrades in that game were tribal tattoos. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. that. I think it was, Far Cry, I think, is always at its best when it's, um, when it knows that it's stupid, and I, I mean, I love Blood Dragon for that yeah. reason. I, Far Cry Primal, I basically played as a gritty Flintstones game. Yeah, uh, and then all the story stuff in that, I was like, "What are you? Who are you? You mask man? You strange you witch doctor? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know what that's about." Um, four was kind of neither here, for, here, here nor there for me. It was, it was not quite exotic enough, but I mean, it was just I don't, I wasn't wild about the, the location. If you remember the sort of push and pull in four of you had these sort of like liberals, kind of that feminist like mm-hmm. uh, militia freedom yeah. fighter woman. Um, and that storyline was really cool and serious. And then there was like Bulk and Skull, or you know, yeah. Uh, and they, I mean, yeah. And they would they would bring you over to Drug Town. And st- this game does a lot of stuff like sure. that. Like the religious cult in this game, like no spoilers, but it's it's mostly about um, like drug use and basically a worship and, mm-hmm. and consumption of a type of drug, which leads to them doing their like third or fourth take in a row on like psychotropic. You know, okay. disasters, and yeah, stuff, and escapism through that. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. it's there's a lot of like yanking in different directions. the The game itself is really fun and really pretty and really cool, and it's just a damn good time. But also, it's just it never really truly finds its voice because there are times where I'm like, that's one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. And then you turn the corner and it's like, oh, that's goofy and stupid, and I'm yeah. at a testicle festival. I mean, yeah, you literally you can have a scene where you're like, oh, did I just go on a drug trip and kill a bunch of innocent people? Mm-hmm. And then your next scene is like, I literally have to find bulls and collect their testicles for the testy fest. While they're mating. Yeah. While they're mating. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Far Cry, I don't think ever really has known what it wants to be. It's sure. kind of, it's consistently I, all over the place. Consistently I mean, I think, inconsistent. I you think know? that's open world games in general. Like, yeah. You can't yeah. be serious when you give players full control in an open world because like a way out, they're going to do jackassery and try to sure, look down sure. and like... I don't know. Yeah, you can't I mean, expect everyone to role play, and that's not a bad thing. I like I, I like bears. I'm happy to hear that there are yeah. bears in the game, and you can befriend one of them. And I, I mean, think that I, sounds like fun. Yeah. I customize my character, which costs a, a good deal of money to do in the game. And I, uh, you, you don't uh, unless you play co-op online, you don't see this character unless you die. Un- unless you die, and it's black and white, and your character flails in the air. So yeah. I have this guy that just looks exactly huh. like me. Uh, he's got like aviators and everything like that, and a cool jacket, and he just blows up. Yeah. 
and you don't see anything. And like every time you die in this game, it goes black and white and it plays a banjo noise. And it's like totally this year's Uncharted Vuvuzela. I saw you put that note down. And I'm like, oh my God, it totally it's to- There's it totally a level is. where I died like 10 times. And yep. By the time I heard that, I'm like, I hate this noise. Well, because as, so we, you talked about like the three main villains you're taking down and killing all three of them lets you fight the main boss, right? And each one of those villains represents one massive region of the game. And you can kind of, dot around and pick pick and choose which missions you want to do where. Um, but the more you do, the more damage you do in one specific region, the more you get somebody basically being like, all right, I hate you. Yeah. I'm sending the militia after you. And like their anger level rises with the weaponry they throw at you. It's sort of like having stars in GTA. So at a certain point, when you get about halfway through pissing off each one of these people, they start sending in airplanes. Yeah. And the airplanes will just basically, you'll be in the middle of a mission. And they'll be like, we found them. And they just drop a bomb and you instantly die. Oh, yeah. And there's no way to like hide or get out of your car. So it's frustrating. You will die a lot, even on even on easy or normal. Yeah. So just you know, get ready to hear that banjo. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. That sounds um. That sounds a bit like the are those like bounty hunters from uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, totally. Like the, yeah. The like shadow core or whatever. No, yeah. Yeah. Those like red guys who show yeah. up horns. Um, but then scary. the uh, the little minute minute like the little tiny micro progression things like you know kill ten dudes or whatever. It yep. sounds, that sounds a bit like South Park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, and yeah. it encourages you like a good insomniac game and encourages you to be like. I want a new perk point. I've never used a flamethrower, so maybe I'll, I'll take out this compound with a mm, flamethrower, and then you right. have a perk point, and you can unlock whatever you want. I mean, yeah. I wasn't really expecting like a total overhaul of Far Cry, so if it's kind of, if it's, I don't know, if it's Far Cry 4.8 or whatever, you know, that, mm-hmm. that's that's fine with me. Um, I'm I'm very, you know, skeptically optimistic, because it is, yeah. after a certain point, you recognize the systems in play, and you're like, Ah oh, man, this is total. I'm just totally screwing around here, you know. And yeah. That's okay. So like, not all games have to be this like massive leap forward that kind of moves the needle mm-hmm. entirely. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I have fun in Far Cry games. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. There, there are multiple times where I was sort of just like, oh, you you painted over that thing that I did already last time, but that's okay because yeah. I like doing it last time. Yeah, this is probably my favorite Far Cry since three. So yeah, I'm that's stoked to play a lot more. Good to hear. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, thank you guys so much. We'll have more on Far Cry next week. Uh, by then, the two of us will probably finish the story. Yes. And I guess without going to spoilers, can say how we feel about the ending. Uh, and then, Max, you could you finally finish Yakuza. So next week, uh, Yakuza 6 comes out. You can go full Kuz. No, will, no, don't, no, don't, don't say, that. say that. I didn't mean, I didn't think about what I was saying. I will sing uh, the song. And you guys uh, also played some uh, cool indie games. I definitely want to talk about The Messenger next week. Yeah. Uh, I also have an interview with Dan Hay from Far Cry for Expert Mode. If you like the one I did with Davide Soliani or any of the ones we've done here at IGN, it's sort of sort of more long, uh, I don't know, high-profile interview series. I don't know what to call it. Um, that goes up this week. So I will tweet that out and uh, go check it. Perfect. And uh, speaking of interviews, we're about to go to an interview where I am hungover talking to Corey. Uh, so for Max and Brian, I am Marty. Uh, uh, here is Marty, Alana, Andrew, and <laughs> Corey. Beyond. 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 Look at that. We did it. I'm yeah. proud of us, guys. Uh, welcome really to Beyond. Uh, my name is Marty Sleeve. I'm joined by Andrew Goldfarb. Hello. Lana Pierce. Hey. And Corey Barlog. Hello. Corey, I am so happy to have you here. I am very happy to be here. Uh, Corey, uh, well, there's a lot of God of War stuff around us. There's a PlayStation on the desk. Uh, who, are who, are <laughs> who, who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Yeah, who are you? And why are you wearing a Sony Santa Monica shirt? Oh, uh, I feel like this is more of an existential question. Than <laughs> uh, uh, I am the director of the new God of War game, uh, and I am... Exceptionally tired. And you guys are yeah. done. You, yeah. you went gold. Yes. I saw the disc. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. So it has to be done, right? Because yeah, we absolutely. We should have a disc. Yeah, yeah. So everyone, it is done. Everyone can go home. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Corey, you were uh, on the God of War franchise. Originally, uh, you were the creative director of God of War 2, and then you left for a bit, yep. and then you came back. I did. When did you come back to Sony Santa Monica? When or Why? Uh, both. both. Either. When oh, and all why. Right. We'll tackle those and in, in order. And yeah. <laughs> That's the interesting thing. Also, what? <laughs> By horse. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, I left around 2008. So I had actually done uh, God of War 1, animation director on that one, and immediately went into directing and writing the second game. Uh, finished the second game and immediately went into writing and uh, laying out the third game. Uh, so that was like 2003 to 2007, uh, mid-2007, so a lot of years. Mm-hmm. I was very exhausted. I needed a, a vacation uh, or some kind of break. Uh, and I believe I probably just had a slight mental breakdown. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> that happened. Yeah. I can't handle it anymore. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think at the time I had some sort of presence of mind to realize I, I was creatively an infant and I needed to get out there and work with some other people. Uh, otherwise, I would be doomed to repeat the exact same 
thing over and over and over again. So you think I, part of that process is what led the newest God of War to seem so different to the others? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Interesting yes. Thing. It is interesting. I actually saw some uh, clip the other day of the God of War Directors Live thing and realized that I actually started talking about this game back then, which was like around 2010 or hmm. 11 or something like that, where we all, I think, well, all the directors were on the, the, the panel and talking about uh, the concept of Kratos not really moving forward, mm -hmm. right? Not really actually doing uh, anything beyond blaming everybody else for his, his sort of bad things happening in his life. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that even at that time, we were like, we really should move him forward. We mm -hmm. should try to have him work through the problems rather than just complain about the problems all the time. <laughs> yeah, He was uh, very yelly back in the day. Right, right. <laughs> He's obstinate towards the clouds. <laughs> at any moment, he can just look up and just yell. Right? Oh, oh, man, man, like <laughs> right. And it's, it became a meme in and of itself, yeah. right? And it, which, you know, I think those things were great. It was at a time, I think, that it was our, our sort of release valve, right? That... Perhaps, and I don't know if this is true, perhaps this, that, that our games speak to people simply because so much of ourselves go into them. So even in the earlier games, right, we had that sort of need to release, right? We were uh, in our, I guess we call our college years of development, right? Mm -hmm. So it was that thumb your nose at the man and mm -hmm. we're going to totally, you know, make the best action game because they say Westerners can't make good action games. Screw that, man. And it was just constantly about proving something uh, and being obstinate mm -hmm. i think really is just how we were but now i think all of us are a lot older a lot more tired uh but i think it's also <laughs> more measured right we think about things yeah. a little bit more and I, I i'm happy that the audience actually wants games that speak a little bit with uh, with a little bit more depth mm -hmm. right? yeah that it isn't just about when maturity for sure like it's, it, it seems so contemplative like it seems so like like there is so much thought going into it obviously but like kratos as a character seems like he's dealing with stuff that like we haven't seen him go through like it, it does feel like he was definitely a little flatter in those games whereas now he like just immediately seems so much more well-rounded and it's the thing that's almost hard to explain the difference uh so like if you guys listened to last week's show andrew and i got to play the first two and a half three hours of the game and then talk to you about it um and it feels so different and so like I don't want to say mature like like right. in a pretentious way but it just yeah. feels yeah exactly <laughs> like I don't want to be navel gazy but like it totally feels it feels like a video game in 2018 as opposed to a video game well, it's in an interesting thing you make the point about you guys maturing but I think that gamers have also kind of matured like the yeah. taste has yeah. and people yeah. want a game more like this than they did and I wonder how that came about or how you know everyone's tastes kind of drove towards wanting these things that are uh, beautiful and narrative driven, and you yeah. know, th I mean, the success of uh, Horizon is a really big part of that. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. no one expected that game to sell as well as it did, and people loved it, and everyone's like, "Oh, we can make games like that. Cool!" Yeah. It's right. like it's yeah. crazy. We yeah, I, I I think it is the the film industry starting way back in the twenties. You look at the films of the twenties, and there was a bit of this sort of like so happy we can make a movie and it has sound and mm -hmm. it has color and they went through all these phases of you know endeavoring to to, to make great movies but still the complexity and the the depth of them kind of grew and the mm. audience's desire and, and and sort of what they wanted to take in grew along with it and i think with games we're obviously starting a lot later yeah right but i i think it's the same thing the audience we just hit that fantastic sort of spurt where all, all of a sudden everybody's going like look i want more out of a game mm -hmm. i want to actually feel something more than or I'm scared, right? Because it's very easy to do that. It's, no, that's just missive. It's not easy to do that. It's the thing we do all the time, right? right. Yeah. But to actually connect with somebody in the audience and make them feel something and feel like, oh, I I can relate to this on a human level. Yeah. Like I I have uh, like you know look at a commercial. It's like. 30 seconds and I can be weepy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and 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 I think that's amazing. And I, I wonder, just love Tide Pod so much. <laughs> right? That Affleck duck. Right? Yeah. Damn uh, millennials. <laughs> and I, I honestly pods. think like we have 30 hours and we can't do what they do in 30 seconds. Come mm. on, man. We got to try harder. But the reality is we have been able to start to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is because the audience actually wants it. They actually yeah. want to know why. I yeah. think people forget that, like, not people forget, but it's like when you think about it, when you compare it to film or, or anything or novels, obviously, like, it's such a young medium. Like, video games yeah. are, like, just barely in their adolescence right now, yeah. you know? And it's, like, it's really fascinating that, like, 
it is like genuinely like it does it does sound pretentious to, to say it this big but it, i mean it's true that you're pushing the medium forward when you when you think about that stuff when you think about like how it affects people and and what you can get that's more than just like this is fun which is like where we were maybe 25 years well, ago it, like yeah. you said like uh, titillation is easy whereas like emotional resonance is difficult like yeah, that has yeah. to be earned yeah um and i feel like we're at that point where like people in games uh, including god of war are trying to earn that emotional resonance which i think is really exciting yes yes it uh, is Interesting creative challenge too. Yeah, yeah. Makes, that makes like going to work every day uh, a little bit more satisfying. Yeah. you know, instead of just rubber stamping. But what, like, I also want to just like ensure like this. Uh, you tear things apart in this game, and you you <laughs> you just cut the hell out of things. There's just a lot of. There's also a lot of yelling and murdering. So, yeah. like anyone who liked that in the early games, like th like this isn't uh, just like gone home, right? <laughs> Although it would be weird if it was gone, like gone it's just Kratos right. walking through a house. Yeah, just like looking just it out, tearing the doors like, down like, yeah. as he goes. I think Atreus might be a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Can you confirm it? That was uh, the original prototype. Yeah, yeah. But, for sure. Uh, we realized other people had already done it, so we had to move forward. With Perfect. Back to the drawing board, yeah. Right. Um, so we talked uh, at length about the game, our hands-on time with it last week. Um, but then uh, there's a bunch of questions people still have. Just. You know, this is like we said. This this game is so different, so new, such a uh, giant step forward for the series uh, that people have a lot of questions of what's still in the game, what's not in the game, how does this play out? Um, Games are an interactive medium, and so is the process of communicating about it. So awesome! Mm, Let's communicate beautiful. with the audience. Uh, Andrew, <laughs> you went to our Facebook group. Um, yeah, I, I made a bunch of questions. Some of these are goofy. Some of these are really interesting. Some of them are what is best sandwich. So I think we can uh, we can go through Corey all. all over what is best sandwich? Corey really isn't flipped it? over his paper because he didn't want to get spoiled. Oh no, I we, we just it. spoiled it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Now we'll, we'll say that one. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We were in the moment now. So yeah. It's just not totally. Ten minutes spoiled. we'll yeah. forget. Like, yeah, in yeah, ten yeah. minutes we'll forget. Yes, have a good point, Andrew. Uh, sure. So let's let's start out. Phil Mansfield wants to know about mocap and about. Specifically, uh, it, hiring someone new to do creators is no mocap. Did you have to tailor it to him, or was that something that you were specifically seeking out that person? Like, how did that whole process go? That was a long process. Uh, there, you know, when I kind of told everybody about the, the the single camera, the the no cut thing, uh, part of making that decision was the performances had to all be captured. You know, with all the actors in the moment on the set. So I needed to get all the performances right there. Traditionally, on the previous games, we would use a, 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 a actor that was very large to capture a lot of the stuff for Kratos and then do voiceover in a booth after the fact, right? But when you have, like, uh, you know, Kratos and his son needing to have a moment, that sometimes that moment is actually a quiet moment, right? That has only, you know, uh, as a line from Kratos <laughs> or something like that, which is uh, honestly in the game, we have like 45 different, mm -hmm, right? How do you write that in the script? It's fantastic. <laughs> they came out like with a way. Is there like a soundboard? Like, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, like uh. Chris is so freaking good that actually he was able to get all the different emotions. And what we do is just put in parentheses what it really means, like conversation ending tone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> or in agreement, right? Yeah. Uh, mm. Which very rare, rarely does he have an agreement, right? That mm. was the special one. Uh, right? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, classic uh, yeah. agreement yeah. tone. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, I, I'm I, I'm not as good as he is. Uh, <laughs> Those are that. for short. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. You're so kind. Um, so knew that right away. We needed to have somebody on the set was going to be large, uh, and uh, trying to find somebody that could also perform was the challenge. So at first, I was like, all right, let's see if we can actually have TC in this. We'll try to do this, but some of it comes down to budget. Of like, you really, if you have somebody in there and they don't walk. Like somebody who is, you know, mm -hmm. 250 pounds, uh, you have to reanimate over top of that. So it ends up sort of adding onto the schedule and everything like that. So I kind of participated in a very long process of interviewing and talking to a lot of people. And it was, Chris was actually cast very late when the producers were coming to me and saying, you probably just need to give up on this. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we just need to bite the bullet and then like add time on and figure out how to make that work mm. with uh, the mocap stuff, which is, I was not. Happy about that simply because we had the Wonners, and the Wonners require a lot of effort uh, already. So yeah. there was going to be the conversation after that, which was probably, let's not do the no-cut camera. So we got very lucky and had him come in for a chemistry read, uh, and he read with Sonny. It's actually in the... Some, we showed some documentary footage of that, I think, at one nice. point. Him, yeah. and, him and Sonny on the set. And Sonny is just so tiny. It is amazing. We cast that kid at nine years old. 
Oh. Uh, and it's and it it looks like Kratos and his son when you're on the set. So it's did he originally audition for the part of Kratos and then this is like a replacement for him? You're That's like, well, funny. you're a nine yeah. year old. You're not right. quite doing the wall. Right. You know? right. I'm sorry, but, but you might be good for this other role. Right? We gave <laughs> well, maybe him all the year. different <laughs> uh's and and you know for a, for a couple of them he was doing really good. Yeah. <laughs> and then you realize about fifteen. So it, was probably, yeah. 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 it was. I spent most of this game in in abject fear of uh, him hitting puberty. <laughs> like it's it's scary, right? That, it reminds me of Lost. Lost with Walt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like Walt. You're like, oh, you're this cute kid, and all of a sudden, like season three, you're like, oh no, you're, right. you're like, don't know what right happened here. here. He's got a yeah. beard, and he's like, yeah. 50 I, mean, years I feel old. like that happened with Game of Thrones as well. Oh my god, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. you're yeah. not kids yeah. anymore. When you go back to like, season one, you're like, isn't this only supposed to be like a couple months? What's going <laughs> right. on here? Yeah, yeah. So we we he his voice started changing right near the end, uh, and I was just. Livid. That's crazy. Yeah, just because I was like, we needed to get all this stuff done. I was constantly panicking and coming in and yelling at the writers and just saying, can we go faster? We need to go faster. Like, you were like, like, yelling at the kid. And I'm like, why are you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't yell at Corey. Him. No, no, no. That's, that's right. terrible. Stop I changing your voice. Uh, you also, speaking of Lost, which is, I feel like this podcast just be called Speaking of Lost. Speaking uh, of Lost. You guys, uh, you also have, there's some notable actors in the game, and we won't talk about his character, but uh, Jeremy Davies. Yeah. Uh, plays yeah. an incredible character that, like, when Andrew and I played the opening of the game, God, we're yeah. like, who is this? We want to know more about this. Um, so what was it like, like, working with, like, you know, also, like, just recognizable actors, especially, like, in mocap, like, you don't even need the credits to come up. I looked at him, I'm like, holy crap, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I was, I have been so lucky on this project to be able to trick so many people <laughs> into working with me. Uh, and he is one of the sweetest, uh, nicest human beings I have ever met. Um, very generous, uh, extremely, extremely professional, and endeavors to do the best work that he can ever do. And that is literally like every one of our performances like that. It rules. That, 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 you know, I was asking them to all do a perfect take uh, every time yeah. we needed to perform, right? So there was no, oh, okay, that everyone was very used to coverage, right? So you do, okay, we're going to go to the medium, we're going to go to the two shot. All right, this is your close up so you can actually really hit the line on that one. This was, hey, there's four people, everybody's got to be on point, and everybody's got to understand this super complicated blocking with Dory running in between everybody and mm -hmm. kind of moving all around and just, uh, it was, it's it was like a insane. stage production where yeah. like you can't trick yeah. people, like yeah. you can't, you just need to do it. Yeah. Well, and I love reading about uh, when Hitchcock shot Rope, which is like it, it's the simulated single cut or whatever. They literally had to build sets that came apart and came back together because the camera back then was so like it was like basically like pushing like a cart. So it was yeah. like they had like a dining room table that had a line in the middle, and the camera would they would push it out, the camera would go through it, and then it would push it back together, and then they would rotate. That like it's genius. so cool. Yeah. Or yeah. if you watch like the making of like Children of Men, yeah, like the scene in the car with like Julian Moore, yeah. and like oh, and like so how good. it's like. Oh. Not a real car because like seats are like flipping down. Yeah. But when you watch the scene, you're like, oh, I don't know how the camera <laughs> yeah. exists in this space, yeah. but it does. Yeah, so we cool. had uh, not uh, exactly similar challenges, mm -hmm. but our challenges were were large nonetheless. Simply because you have the cameraman Dory that is moving around and he's focused on his monitor. So there's people behind him. Sometimes I'm following behind him, just like looking at the monitor, and then I'm like tapping him over, you know, just try to like. Backseat drive, basically. Yeah. I was probably exceptionally annoying yeah. during that period. Dory but, hates uh, you. <laughs> yeah, there, he probably has a tiny little Cory voodoo doll. Right? <laughs> it's, I think that is probably something the entire team yeah. would get down with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's funny with the single cut thing. Um, uh, Lee Washbrook in the group uh, asked about death, and it's funny because we actually got that question on Twitter from some people too. That yeah. like, obviously, when you die, it's it's you know game over screen, whatever. Like it, it yeah. does obviously break it. Why, did you have to have conversations about how that was going to work? Because, like, obviously it, it doesn't count as part of the single cut or anything. Right. Yeah, it was something we looked at initially. And there is a mechanic in the game that was born from that. Uh, but something I realized was you need the palate cleanser. When you die, you actually... We, we have to reset the world, and it it, it is weird. It, it, it sort of uh, diminishes... The, the the state the fail state right if it mm -hmm. doesn't sort of give you that 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 moment and also it gives us an opportunity to actually communicate with the player to say like hey you could do these things right because there was just throughout all the playtest process we realized this is very complicated uh, more complicated perhaps than we had started out with uh, uh, and 
to get all the information uh, to the player without feeling like all you do for five hours is just get talked at with tutorials. Mm -hmm. uh, that has that great sort of. It's a classic like video game desk screen hint, right? Mm -hmm. But still, it's a, it's classic because it's so effective, right? Uh, and yeah, it was it was disorienting, I think, for people to not have the palate cleanser to have that like. Yeah. To let you know you died, right? But well, I did not want that. You are dead. Yeah, you need like a Pavlovian like moment of reflection of like I did bad. Let's think about why I did right. bad, and let's try to do better next yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. I definitely died uh, early on against that first troll because I was playing it like an old God of War game. So I just like walked up and was like button mashing. And I was yeah. like, oh, this isn't gonna don't go well for me at all. <laughs> But the no cuts thing has been like kind of controversial. Like people keep arguing about it. It's been really interesting. It's also it's hard to explain. People are like that doesn't make any sense. It's impossible. Or people are saying it's happened before, but yeah. I don't think I've seen it happen. Well, before. someone like, well someone was like uh, GTA Five did it, and I was like GTA Five might literally have the most cuts of any game because if you literally <laughs> but look at it, it's an amazing transition into their the cinematics. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. was super impressive. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think Actually, Tomb Raider did that. The first Tomb Raider um, did a really good job of you were in gameplay, and then it would go into a cutscene, and I would still try and move. Because they'd yeah. be like, "Oh wait, no, okay, okay, you got this pot. I'll let yeah. you climb that tower by yourself." <laughs> yeah, yes, that was. They, a lot of people have been able to get the the sort of transitions in. For me, it wasn't about the transitions as much as it was about film has a, a language, right? And, and 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 cuts allow you to move between your lenses and sort of your framing to subconsciously speak to the audience, which I think is fantastic, but. I think with video games, there's a, a lot more uh, possibility to keep players in control, mm. and then even when they're not in control, give them that feeling of immediacy, yeah. right? That everything is happening right now, right? And that is just, I think, something in a movie that you're still, you're still farther away from it, right? It's like doesn't stop my appreciation of watching fantastic movies and television. It's just a different experience. Yeah, I mean, it also. It leaves so many questions that even I have. So, like, God of War Three ends with you know, Kratos stabs himself and he's bleeding, and then Dude, hope it, is restored. It does? Yeah, yeah. Spoilers. spoilers. You, didn't, you didn't get to that one yet. No, I, I I'm, I'm working my way through. You went gold. <laughs> yeah. you, you can get through God of War Three now. But I like, had time to play. yeah, Pandora's box is open. Like, hope is restored to humanity, but then like the world's like going to hell. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're in a cabin in the woods with his son. Right. And my, I'm just like, well, how did we get here? Right. And I'm curious how you even begin to tell us how you got there without cutting back to like previously on God of God War. Of War. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, which it, clearly you can't tell us. Yeah. No, you can tell us. Like Iran would probably be upset, but I, I had this us. interesting um, conversation with uh, George a long time ago, where he was talking about going to see a play and talking about uh, this great example of how the exposition was dramatized, right? And this was like this eye-opening moment because he was literally just throwing this bit of information out and I was just like, oh my God, I know I don't know anything. <laughs> uh, and, and he was talking about there's uh, two women on a couch and they're having a conversation and the phone starts to ring. And it rings like two or three times and the one woman looks over and says, you know, are you going to answer that? Oh, no, it's probably just my son. Uh, and she's like, oh. And they continue having their conversation, and the phone continues to ring. The audience is starting to get to that point where they're like, answer the phone. Yeah. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. And she says, no, I'm not. that's fine. We're, we, we haven't talked in so long. She's essentially telling the exposition in this dramatic moment in which the audience is all going like, oh, my gosh, you yeah. need to answer the phone. But you are right there with her as she's giving you the reasons why she refuses to do the thing that you just want her to do. Mm. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's fantastic. Like, there was no need to, to say previously the relationship between these two characters has fallen apart for these reasons, right? You can actually establish so much in the moment, right, through re interactions with characters, uh, done smartly, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. it's now to be determined whether or not I did it smartly. I mean, it's even mm -hmm. nonverbal stuff. Like, there's the moment where, like, Kratos is looking down at his wrists and he's, like, tying oh, yeah. the bandages. Yeah, and, like, yeah. and yeah. they're bloody. And, like, that to me says everything about yeah. who he is now and what... The wounds that never heal. Well, and well, it also answers the, like, oh, is this the same Kratos or is this, like, a monomyth where this is a different Kratos? And you're looking and you're like, oh, no, that's no. that's his yeah, wounds yeah. from his servitude monomyth. Yeah, I, I really love, like, that idea of, like, obviously, like, expository dialogue can be a bad thing. It can, right. like, you hear so often, like, show, don't tell, blah, blah, blah. But it's, like, I actually feel like it, kind of the inverse of that is that, like, that example is is such a smart way of, like, making people 
care and listen in a way that like cutting to a flashback does feel like the easy solution. This yeah. is obviously much more challenging, yeah. but like, man, like if there is like a monologue from Kratos where he does reflect on that time or how he got there, like that's probably going to have to be a pretty damn good performance. And like, I feel like it seems like it will be yeah. like, so like, I, I don't know, like based on what we played, I totally feel like it, it seems like it's going well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Chris brought a lot of who he is and what he's, he's gone through in his life to his performance, which I think we were all kind of doing the same thing. You know, I have an unbelievable team that I work with and every one of them brings this unique perspective every day to work that, changes what the outcome of what we're doing is at the beginning of this game and i had this idea and i have sort of a general direction that kind of has you know a pie wedge of you know variability in it and it, within that pie wedge everybody is providing things that cause the ship to steer just a little bit right and just a little bit left uh that without their input without their life experiences it wouldn't be what it is right and i think that's that's awesome, man. I don't ever want to just sit in a room by myself and create. I, obviously, I think that would just be me in an asylum if I was in a room by myself creating things, right? We might all wall. be in a room by ourselves right, right now. Who knows? This, <laughs> this is a simulation. Yeah. All of it. Oh, God. Like, dear Elon Musk. <laughs> Why did you simulate us all so tired? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Why did you simulate uh. too many drinks? Uh, do you want me to keep reading these? Yeah, you're so good. Oh, I like your so dulcet tones. Okay, well, there's another question about the single shot thing, but we can okay. let's move on a little bit. Uh, let's do. Uh, I will say one thing on the the controversy mm -hmm. of the single shot. Uh, it never takes anything away from the game, right? Like the whole reason that this was done was because I want people to connect in a in a stronger way with it. So I, I ask people just to give it a a, a a playthrough because I think it it really does. I think it is the proof, right? That you're like, oh, okay, no, I get it. Like this mm -hmm. isn't. This isn't something to do to just to do. Well, and there was like, you know, Andrew and I played the opening, and so there's, and there was no point where I'm just like, oh my God, you need to cut. Yeah. Right. Like, what's going to happen in the B shot? <laughs> where are those cuts? Yeah. <laughs> I need a medium <laughs> shot now. Uh, Tyler Floyd says, what, if anything, did you try and retain from past entries in the series? Oh, wow. That's a good question because we tried to retain a lot. Because um, we've also been talking about how different it is. So yeah. Yeah. that's interesting to talk about well, how it's not different. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the beginning of the game, I've, I've told some people this, at the beginning of the game, uh, uh, there was a small group of us. We got together and we listed out on a board, you know, a very large whiteboard, uh, every aspect of the game, right? Just so that we could understand and kind of go point by point and understand, like, why is this important? What what does this offer the game? Uh, is this the load-bearing wall of the franchise, right? Like, do you need this? Without this, we don't have a game. And... What we found, which I thought was very interesting, was there wasn't anything that was like, you must have this, and the, otherwise it doesn't, you know, hold up. Uh, and then when things were, hey, this is necessary to keep this, how can we flip it on its head? Because a lot of times on the early God of War games, we were inspired by the games that we played at the time, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the games of our childhoods, uh, and they sort of started to feed into all the decisions we made, but we never sort of looked at something and said, ah, Bujangai, we're just going to take something from Bujangai. It was more like, no, there's this cool thing they do. What if we turned it over? What if we looked at it like this? Oh, we can do this, and we can add this on top. That would be really cool. Uh, and I think the same thing sort of exists, that we just sort of looked at things we had done uh, and just said, all right, well, we may can reverse this a little bit. I think Kratos was important for me uh, right from the beginning because a lot of people uh, throughout the development process, and I think both out in the public as well as uh, at the studio, were like, why keep Kratos, right? Uh, I was going to ask that. Was there a point where you considered not having him? No. I was a point where I almost was forced to get rid of Atreus, uh, because everyone was panicked with how complicated it was going to be. Mm. Uh, but Kratos, no, I, I was I was pretty adamant, I think, right from the beginning and saying, like, the, I wanted the challenge. I wanted the challenge to take a character that some people uh, loathed, right? That, that, mm. that, that, that they're like, look, I don't like this character. He's just, you know, uh, reprehensible at times. And, again, we wrote him that way. Mm. We made him the antihero intentionally. And I was like, man, we took him here. I want the challenge to take him not here like, hey, I'm riding the white horse and <laughs> saving the world, right? Like, it's much more about, like, can we have an earned moment in which a large portion of the audience goes, wow, I, I really feel bad for him, right? Mm -hmm. Like, or I really feel like I'm rooting 
for him, or I feel that I've I've had that same experience, right? I think that is awesome. That is to make the, the God of War relatable, right? Yeah. Basically, right. that's gonna be hard. I mean, yeah. to make a God relatable, exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah, yes, and it's like uh, uh, the Daredevil season one is the the thing I always go back to, right? Because I I grew up on Daredevil and I thought I knew who Kingpin was, but I watched that first season and I was like, oh my. God, I feel yeah. bad for him. Yeah, like I, I, I relate and and empathize with a character who really just was like bad guy, right? Sure, big big bad guy. So I think, I think that is a, an incredible achievement. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's that's an exciting way. That's an exciting challenge. I yeah. think that was the best thing about Telltale's Batman series was that if you yes. have you played it, yes. that they basically had all the characters that everyone's always known, but they made them completely different with completely different backstories. And so when you're playing through it for the first time, you don't know what they are going to do or where they came from, even though you had the context prior. And I like I love that flip. It's it's really interesting. And if you guys are trying to do the same thing with Kratos, then I'm all for that. And then I, There's I, another aspect to that too, the circumventing of the expectations. Mm-hmm. That that even if you think you know what's going on, you're getting surprised, right? That's to me why I'm so such an advocate of anti spoilers, mm-hmm. yeah. right? That I don't want. I don't want. I'm sorry for the sandwich game. question. I already feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really just keep taking that knife, yeah. don't you? Yeah. We'd already forgotten about it, and now I, we remember it. I really forgot about the sandwich question until you brought it up. What's the sandwich question? Yeah, the oh, sandwich question. No, we're good. Oh, you forgot. Okay, yes, okay. you're right. Yeah, I was about to fine. spoil it again. It's fine. Everything's fine. Let's do it. Um, well, it's funny. Okay, so you brought up uh, inspirations. Um, uh, ben Forrester says, seems like the game is wearing a lot of influences on its sleeve, like uh, The Road and Logan, and he says The Last of Us, maybe. Uh, but <laughs> there are other properties, are there other properties you've been Does he say by? maybe? No, I, I'm you, you added the maybe? Yeah, that's well, I feel like out. Logan's yeah. less. Yeah, the, Logan came out a year ago. It sounds like The Road is like, let's just say The Road. Okay. Right. Um, but anyway, like, are there are there things that you looked at that, you know, books, movies, anything that, that you know, were inspiration for this? Yeah. I mean, I, your real life. I, yeah. <laughs> my well, my life was yeah, yeah. was a big inspiration. Yes, uh, I always say I read the road before I came back. Um, uh, Oban Logan, the 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 actual sort of comic run was was interesting. Uh, yeah, it's Lone Wolf and Cub. There's there's even some references there that 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 were kind of interesting for us. But I think a lot of what we were pulling from truly was what is closest to us. Right, that it was sitting in the room with the writers and talking about sort of things we've been through, and I think for me, I started in in the early stages of this kind of saying like, wouldn't it be interesting that on our previous games we talked about uh, moments in the game, like the big moments that that we do in the God of War games, as being, ah, oh, it'd be cool if we did this, right? Which that's great. There's nothing uh, wrong with beginning like that, but I thought it could be interesting that we say like, what if the moment started with the first time you have a beer with your dad? Or what if it was the first time you saw a fireworks uh, show with your parents, right? right? Or the first time you went on a roller coaster? And it's like taking those things that have these very strong sort of emotional bonds within you and kind of go like, okay, we build from that. It's still a big moment. It's still classic sort of epic uh, mythological moment. But when you come down out of it, there is this sort of human connection to the entire thing because of the context of all of it. So I have no idea where the hell I was going with this. Well, <laughs> but it's very also, interesting, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. But well, it's also, I was interested by all of it. Fantastic. See, <laughs> also, it roller coasters trick. confirmed in the game. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah that roller coaster sequence at the beginning. Yeah, Andrew, can you write up that new story? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> no, it's really interesting because we, we have had, um, you know, a lot of amazing games. I don't want to say a lot. Like, we've had a handful of amazing games recently like... Uh, that that focus on a relationship between two characters. So yeah. you have like Booker and Elizabeth, or Joel and Ellie, or Lee and Clem, okay. uh, or Chloe and Nadine. Or like, Chloe and Nadine. Yeah. But right. none of it is directly paternal. Yeah. Right. Like all of it, there's like surrogate parents. Right. Um, but like I can't. Point again, even in Horizon, it's like. Yeah, mm. I can't really think of like a father son or like you know an actual mm. like like lineage bond yeah. like that in the in games there's definitely really like 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 Lee and Clementine is what I always go to as like a paternal like like he is obviously a father figure for her but yeah, yeah like the actual blood connection is really yeah. really interesting which yeah. makes those moments where like uh I guess without going to spoilers there's a there's a scene in the opening couple hours where you come across some some bad dudes, and some stuff happens to them. So you you you've seen something. And crazy. to clarify, it's actually the stars of the game, bad dudes. Yeah, this yeah. Thing, yeah. are you bad enough? Right. Unexpected crossover, yeah. right? Um, and 
after you, you kill them and Kratos, you're like, I've seen this stuff before. Whereas Atreus is like, Dad, what was that? <laughs> right. Like, what did we just see? Mm-hmm. And you need him to to like throw down a rope for you. And he stops. He pauses because he's thinking, like, what just happened? And you physically, you have to hit a button to be like, hey, I know that was messed up. You got to push forward. Like, you got to get through this with me, which is insane. Like, yeah. that's not a thing. Not only do games do, but that's not a thing God of War does. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it, you know, there's there's references and, and sort of nods back to the history, this idea that it is uh, like there there is some sort of speculation of like maybe Atreus is not his son, but no, it's his son. And and it's his son because there is a stronger sense of responsibility, right? And and again, this is not to 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 denigrate any of the other things, any of the other games um at all. It's to say that the reason that I made that choice was you're being responsible for who that person becomes, mm-hmm. right? Is so overwhelming i think to a normal person but then take somebody who has such a complicated and altogether kind of screwed up past right well and that's the thing is part of his past if it's kratos is also to do with things that have happened to his blood family right yes. so it's like that i feel like that makes it even more significant and as he's lost everything that's what kind of made him who he is and then right. it's like but what if i lose you like yeah. he can wins. never he can never ever ever forget that right he is wearing the the uh, spoilers uh, mm-hmm. the 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 sort of memory of that event mm-hmm. forever he can't die he's doomed to to walk the earth forever right and being alone with his own uh, thoughts obviously is terrible mm-hmm. right so this 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 kid is his lifeline right his his relationship uh, with uh, the boy's mother and uh, his son are, are are the things that were kind of keeping him. Uh, somewhat sane, but he's still on a journey, right? It is. It is truly like for me the the earned moment of being able to have a, a real moment or connection with his son. Yeah. yeah, and it's that like he literally seems like he traveled to the ends of the earth to put distance between like physical distance and time distance between yeah. his past. And so if the past ever comes knocking, that's like legitimately terrifying, right? Yeah. And and like his his journey is all about stopping the sort of it's a breaking the cycle the familiar cycle he had because obviously zeus was like the worst father figure ever right and well zeus is dead yeah oh, no. son of a bitch <laughs> We're just ruining everything for people today um but yeah it's uh, zeus was a terrible dad chronos was a terrible dad to zeus right chronos yep. tried to eat his kids so his kids killed him don't do that you know zeus uh feared the, the power of his children, so he killed them, uh, or he tried to kill them and then forced his kids to kill him. Uh, so Kratos is in this situation where he doesn't really know how to father a child because he's never been fathered mm-hmm. himself, right? Mm-hmm. He's never had any example. So it is a lot like, you know, human beings. Everything is unknown. We are mm-hmm. feeling around for a light switch in the dark at all times, right? It is guessing all the time. Yeah, it's, I mean... In what we played, like you can take down a giant, terrifying troll, but when it comes to him placing a hand on Atreus's shoulder to like say they're there, that's difficult for him. Yeah, like that's hard, which is insane. Yeah. I love that. Has Kratos yeah. ever really even had a friend before? Oh, <laughs> oh not my god! To, not to Kratos name him. and a puppy, <laughs> right? Kratos needs a puppy. He, you know, in the original game uh, pitches. You know, he had a, a a baby and he had a puppy. Like those were the two uh, potential companions, and they very, very, very not in in this one, but in God of War one, back in the day, man. Some of Dave's early uh, concepts. How do you direct a puppy in a single shot? <laughs> like, imagine adding right? a puppy to that man. Oh, right? the dog pooped again. <laughs> right. Damn it. <laughs> Walked off screen. It's like, oh. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't I see some sort of tweet about Neil actually had a a, a dog? Yeah. Oh, they, they had, had a mocap. Yeah, yeah, they had a mocap right? dog. Yeah, yeah. That uh, apparently the dog's name adorable. was Roach. That is Roach? wonderful. Roach yeah. named the dog. Yeah, the dog's name is Roach. Yeah. The dog's real life, like, like it's it's like the horse. Its Christian name was Roach. Oh, <laughs> 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 it's biblical name. <laughs> I like that you saw Neil Druckmann in person and didn't ask about the Last of Us Part Two, but instead were like, "So that dog you tweeted? Yeah, what's about. up with this dog? What's it his name?" Like, I have to imagine Neil was so bored at Dice by people being like, "Hey, yesterday you posted that picture of the dog. What's <laughs> what's up with that dog?" He's like, "Hey, we're also making a video game." I'm like, "Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, dog. Don't care about it. Yeah. What's up with the dog?" Yeah, 
I mean, don't post a picture of a dog in a mocap suit and expect people not to talk about it. Right. I have so many questions about that suit, too. Like, is it custom fit? Like, is, they there, like, probably is he hot? Like yeah. Is the dog okay? Yeah. Like, did he, he find it on water? I'm sure the dog was fine. Is the I'm dog sure part that, of a union? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, is it that's a union? Oh, dog. my God. Dog, yeah. dog unionization. Right. Yeah. Could be a thing. Heard of her first. Is he part of the SAG? Uh, some of these. <laughs> Wag. <laughs> Wag. Wag. <laughs> Uh, some of these are doing the thing that I, I think we're guilty of too, but that a lot of people do where you're making a game and everyone's asking like, what are you going to do after this game? And you're like, well, calm down. I just finished this one. But I, I am curious, like, <laughs> you know, I don't think you can answer this directly. Uh, Daniel Hobson says without getting into the ending too much, uh, does this feel like the start of another trilogy? I know you probably can't answer that directly, but were you thinking of this as completely self-contained or were you thinking of this as like the beginning of a whole new Norse chapter for Kratos? I originally started pitching this to people um, and and saying, you know, the mythologies of the world are sort of cultural origin stories separated by geography. So when you think about the mythologies, I, I say the visual is the, the, the Hubble telescope image of all the, the, the galaxies, right? That, that super long exposure shot that shows all the galaxies of the world as part of a whole universe, right? And I think you look at the planet and it is really just these myth mythological stories all over the world that kind of exist at the beginning of time all the way into present. So, you know, historically in their timelines, you know, so a lot of these stories are about before man. Right, so that they're like this happened before, and we were talking about what this was. So these connections to all of that was okay. When he leaves Greece, he is leaving sort of the the the, the sort of ecosphere of this mythology. But there are so many others that exist all over the place, and that when he goes to Scandinavia, he ends up in Scandinavia. Um, it is kind of this line of demarcation, right? This sort of BCAD change uh, to, okay, it is still him, but he has entered into this sort of new belief system, right? It is like going to another country, right? That, you know, everyone's speaking a different language. There is a different sort of set of rules and cultural norms, right? Uh, it's just, it happens to be that there's a bunch of gods hanging around with a bunch of monsters hanging around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I remember you saying not that long ago that this is this version of Kratos, but you could delve into other mythologies with him in the future. Yeah. And, put, and I think that's really interesting because it's something that, you know, it, having him be part of one and the idea that it would overlap is jarring, but also really interesting. It's like you can do a lot of weird stuff there yeah. with different mythologies just intertwining. So. And having like even slight tangential connections, like I, I very, very, very intentionally have this period of time from the end of three to the beginning of this game in which we don't tell anybody how long it is, right? Mm -hmm. I know how long it is. The writers know how long it is. No one else does. That's my thing. Like, right? to me, I'm like, is this, like, years or is this, like, eons? Right. Like, is this, like, a, like an immeasurable mm -hmm. amount of time? It is a measurable amount of time, though. Right. It is a measurable amount of time, and we've always kind of existed in this, this sort of, like, larger chunks. We've never actually said the date, mm -hmm. right? Like, we don't say what, like, like, date it is. We are living in periods of time. So, like... The, the the era here is like you know the the Viking era, the migration, which is that that period of time where the Europeans moved north and kind of started to populate and created the Vikings uh, culture, and then this massive expanse of time called the pre-migration, and in that pre-migration, you know it was very very barren and very Spartan up there, uh, but we were saying Spartan. right, you see I did that, that was really good. you know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we should have just acknowledged it and moved on instead. No, no, no. I think calling it out really just makes me look better. I mean, so the best really jokes good. are the ones that you explain. Right. Yeah. That really is. Yeah. It is funnier when yeah. we explain it. Yeah. yeah. And we're still explaining it. Oh, and no. we're still, right. this is, we're just chewing up air. Yeah, actually, the next great. question is, can you explain that joke? <laughs> <laughs> it's from Marta Sleva. <laughs> right. Yes. But that, 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 that period of time is when we are saying that's when the gods and monsters sort of walk the mm -hmm. earth. So this period of time is actually when... The Vikings of the future were saying, you know, hey, we're fighting for Thor, we're fighting for Odin, but they've abandoned us. Where are they, right? Like, like they are in this period of time where there's these stories of them, and they kind of feel like they should be hanging out and walking around. I love the aspect of feeling like the gods were sort of amongst everybody, mm -hmm. right? That there is a bit more of the... I look at the, the Greek gods and our sort of interpretation of them as this, you know, they're the politicians. They live in these polished, marble, beautiful, ostentatious, power castles right and and they all have really nice armor and everyone is just manipulating the little people below them right uh but 
the, the, the Norse gods, the, the Azer gods especially, are, in my mind, kind of described like Hunter S. Thompson's uh, depiction of the Hell's Angels mm-hmm. from his book in the 60s. Like this, these hard drinking, you know, just proud to be the dirtiest, like nastiest, like down to fight at yeah. any moment, right? And live every second of life, right? Because the Norse gods all know when they're going to die, who's going to kill them, yeah. right? Like they, are, they, everything has been predetermined and it's like this... On the surface, acceptance of all of that, but perhaps underneath, some people are not that. too cool. With they all know when they're going to die. Yeah, Ragnarok right. was was sort of preordained, yeah. right? So that everybody sort of everybody knows when it's going to happen. Wow. who's going to do it? So, uh, I mean, that's an interesting thing because I feel like, uh, like at least growing up in elementary school, like we learn Greek mythology. Yeah. Like you learn the basics of right. Greek mm-hmm. mythology. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Norse Hamilton's mythology, book, you sort you know. of have to you have to like want to learn about it and i feel like a lot of people now are it's like oh yeah i know norse mythology it's thor yeah right that's yeah. thor it's he's Chris got Hemsworth. that hammer right. he hangs out got, with captain america's right. son he's got sick abs and, and, yeah. everyone is so hunky yeah, yeah. so oh. he fought jeff goldblum <laughs> in that one time yeah right. uh so i mean you're jeff goldblum uh, is norse mythology oh my god uh yeah i really want jeff goldblum he's amazing uh wait he's in the jurassic park game yeah he is. he's coming he's yeah coming again. i'm really excited about oh. that game yeah um uh, but no like so i feel like it's interesting because i think a lot of people are going to enter and be like oh yeah yeah i know norse mythology and you get to be like, well, no, you don't. Right. Like, let, let us show you what it's actually like. Because I knew nothing about it. I, I had that same attitude going yeah. into this. And I was like, I totally know this. Yeah. Oh, that hammer no. he throws, it comes back. We can yeah. use that. Yeah. <laughs> we can totally do that. Yeah. It's, uh, when, when I was reading all the different mythologies, I did kind of like a very quick coverage of a bunch, right? When I was trying to figure out what the mythology we wanted to end up in with. And there is such a bizarre very Scandinavian sense of humor to the, the the Norse myth, right? And we were so serious in the previous games. Uh, and I knew, like, if we're going to try to engage the audience for a longer period of time, we have to have the peaks and valleys. We have to uh, have a little bit of levity, right? And a, and a levity that is sincere, not yada, 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 right? Like, we're not going to do that. But... Uh, there was a tremendous amount of freedom even reading the initial uh, myths to go like, okay, there's there's some cool stuff we can do here, right? And then also just to be surprised with how much I didn't know, like Thor is an absolute prick in the, the mythology. He's just a horrible, horrible, horrible person. He is not hunky in Australian, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Thanks for looking at me. Yeah, yeah, right. I like, yeah, I sort hunky of in Australian. You, right, hunky in hunky Australian. Australian. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Oh boy, um, Corey, this was uh, wonderful. I know. You, I think you had a, you had an out at noon, and it's currently at noon. Andrew, we had one question. Oh, there's we one. Do. There's we'll, one pressing question. It's been yeah. Chekhov's gun this entire show. We'll end. Oh. Up, we'll end on this question. Uh, what is best sandwich? What from is... uh, Tahoe, Rio, Nevada? Wow. All right. What is best sandwich? Is this a reference to me making a sandwich at the beginning of the God of War two documentary? I Probably don't not think so. <laughs> I think this is a Jared reference. Let, let Jared asked this yes. on his podcast. What is what is the, what is the reference? Do you think so? That I don't think it's a reference. Oh, no, I think they just want to know. Jared literally what asks, like "What is best sandwich, sandwich?" On every episode of podcast. Oh, oh my god, that's fantastic. Okay, okay, so what is best sandwich? Wait, now I want to know what. Why are you making a sandwich in this God of War document? I yeah, it. I, it's like the ogres are like on the end thing. It's like Kratos is like a sandwich. You right. <laughs> that is amazing. Now I, I, I'm, I've never had it. But the Monte Cristo I've heard yep. is an epic sandwich. Pretty solid. Uh, what is that? It's a fairly difficult one to That's make. That's like as a well. It's the. Th- isn't it like uh, French toast? It's like it's like the the it, bread and like a Swiss cheese. Sir, yeah, but and syrup? then like Don't ham. You like, you like bake the whole thing. You though, like right? fry oh, wow. it. I think you fry it. Like oh, yeah. I think there's like yeah. syrup on it. It's like a heart attack. Like like yeah. a pure heart attack. Right. Cool. But yeah. I think they at one point had it at Denny's and took it off the menu because people wouldn't order it. It was illegal. Yeah. When it's I, too much I, for Denny's, it's like, right. You're like, you, you know, that that's the bottom at that point. Yeah. What's uh, too much for Denny's? But Denny's is like, hey, let's. Right. Uh, <laughs> we draw the line at yeah. the Monte Cristo. Let's show some pack, guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It also is the only sandwich that I know, so. Oh. I mean, you could just been like turkey. Didn't you literally? Right. And jelly. Oh, there you go. I, I felt like it needed a proper name. We needed yeah. to have a sandwich oh, that actually uh, was big enough to have its own. Designation. You know, somewhere in this country, there will be a sandwich shop that will make a Kratos, and, and it'll be it'll be a Monte Cristo sandwich. Yeah, it's gonna be like Arby's will congratulate you at launch. Yeah. Like the Arby's like Twitter account will be like, I think I've already some seen. gray on the outside yeah. of it. Right. Yeah. 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 
chuck some red paint on there, and yeah. then you're good to go. Yeah, father son issues. <laughs> nice marbled rye. Yeah. Ooh, that's actually that's that's pretty good. Uh, Corey, thank you so much. Uh, let's just leave off on like, what is you want? You're gold. The game's done. Uh, yes. So it's out in four weeks, like a little less than a month. April twentieth. Uh, yes. Uh, what is like? What's sort of the parting words that you want to just tell? You know, either longtime fans of the series or people who are intrigued by this, who may not have played the the previous games. Like, what's sort of the one thing you want to impart on them? Mm. That's a really deep question. I'm sorry. I know, right? Like, that's a weird sandwich. Oh, pit you're missing that flight, <laughs> right? Uh, hmm. I, I we worked a, a very hard. This is five years in the making. Uh, and there is not a single video on the planet that can give you the experience that the game can give you. So I would say that I, I encourage everyone to to really get their hands on the controller because that is, to me, where the rubber meets the road on any video game, right? That, that watching something only gives you a, a portion of the experience, and, and we deal much more in the interactive and the sort of give and take. So I would say please play because uh, it will... Change your life now. <laughs> See, I felt like I really it may had to have an big. impact. Uh, but no, uh, the, the Monte Cristo. The, the Monte Cristo. Uh, also, did uh, we talk about this excellent PS Pro that we have on the desk for anyone? That's true. We, uh, didn't, we didn't mention it. Um, th- it's God of War design, I assume. Yeah. If anyone who's watching the, um, I'm just staring at it now because I have yeah, the front. Yeah, I've been looking at the same, back. So I'm right. looking at it. It's like the, uh, there's a controller on the front there as well. So if you're listening to the audio version, totally check it out. It's it's really nice. And, and we're looking at the back. It's got like all of the buttons. And yeah. also, we're gonna have a in, some invented. sexy footage of it on IGN. Sexy, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. got you know little. Uh, it's the axe and the runes on the front. Very cool. It's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, Corey. Thank you so much. Uh, I cannot wait to play more than the first two and a half hours because I really enjoyed the first two and a half hours. I am very excited for you guys to play the entire thing. That's a, a right a, now, a, right now. Oh no, <laughs> under your seats. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Corey, thank you so much uh, for Andrew and Alana. My name is Marty. This was Beyond, and we'll see you all next week. Bye bye.